flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm. Pop quiz, which one do you prefer? A or B? I posed this question on my Instagram this morning and I got some interesting results. I'd like to see what you guys think. Just for some reference, today is June 23rd. The low this morning in upstate New York was 39 degrees at my house. This is my third succession planting of ranunculus. I pre-sprouted these corms on March 17th. So here we are, it is June 23rd, and this third succession of ranunculus is still producing blooms for me. I'm not exactly sure how much longer it's gonna last. I would say less than a week, but I'm very excited about the absolutely gorgeous flowers that it's producing. Anyway, today's video is all about the new beds. Those 14 rows that I put in way down the hill, they're planted. So it took me several weeks to plant these rows because, well, we had a stretch of 90 degree weather for five or six days, then we had torrential downpours for several days, so it took me about a month to get everything in the ground. I do have some empty spaces because those are where my succession plantings are gonna go. You always have to plan for that succession planting space. If you fill up your beds and you have a second set of zinnias or basil or, or anything, you, where's it gonna go? You have to keep the room open. So I'm gonna show you guys some video of me planting everything, which is, pretty old, it's several weeks ago, up until just the other day when I was finishing. And because it's been so long, things look quite a bit different. So after I show you guys the video of me putting everything into the ground, we're gonna go head down there and check it out now, cause it's quite a bit different. Time to plant out the babies. These are my, my honeysuckles that I love. And there are the fields, time to plant. I use the plow truck to carry everything down. I've got bags of compost in the back here. Gotta get it out. Ye old Chevy Tahoe. I'm starting right here with this row. These are all of my zinnia babies and I'm going to attempt to do a rainbow. Wish me luck. All right. Roy G. Biv. I'm gonna attempt to pull out all of the red ones. Hmm. Well, this is more complicated because there's pinks and stuff. So should that go at the end of red? I think that should go to the end of red. The same with salmon. Oh, for the love of gosh. This whole tray is coral and salmon. All right, what do we got here? We're gonna go reds to pinks. All right, let me get gloves. A June bug decided to sleep in my zinnias. Wake up. I just found him in between two soil blocks. Wake up. Oh, you're gonna crawl now? You stretching? I must have woken him up too early. So the red is in. I spaced them between six and nine inches apart. I'm not really exact. I think I started out with more like a nine spacing and then I ended up with more like a six spacing, which is totally fine. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's a good distance. Last year I did four inches and so did Gina and that was great, uh, but I wanted to give them a little bit more opportunity to, um, to bush out and be beautiful. So this took up probably about eight feet of just red. So, oh boy. And that was only one, three of these little squares. So I guess I'm fortunate that I think I'll have enough space. That's where that rock was. We're gonna have to get that out with the tractor bucket. He's really loud. Anyway, every like once a month we mow the brush hog all the tall grass because the yard, like well, he'll brush hog all this. And that's where we mow with the, the finished lawnmower. You know when people post pictures and say, I woke up like this? I literally woke up like this. So <laughs> no judging, no judging. So this is actually how I, my hair, I slept like this, okay. So a funny story about bright pink. I'm gonna, okay, so I have Bayonaries red, and then I have, <laughs> I'm, gonna rem I'm gonna forget. Coral salmon, Oklahoma salmon, coral, and now I'm at bright pink. Okay, so I'm at bright pink. Look at this, 
<laughs> this was on the ground inside the deer fence, hardening off for several, several days. They did get a tiny bit sunburned, but they're gonna be fine. Um, I ran it over with the four-wheeler. <laughs> I literally sheared off. All, I ran it over with the four-wheeler. I don't know how else to describe it, but I think some of them are okay. Um, but I do have other bright pinks right here, I think. Oh no, I already planted those. So I already have more bright pinks. And I, this is only the first half of the zinnias. I have a whole exact replica of what I have right here downstairs started again from seed for round two of zinnias. So um, yeah, these were all started on May 2nd, by the way, May 2nd. So they've been in here um, only about three weeks. So that's how much, this is like, they're, they're perfect. They're beautiful. These are Oklahoma pink, and that is what will be going in after bright pink. Um, I might put an Instagram filter over my face for this video, but I just, it takes time to like shower and get ready and put my makeup on to do a YouTube video. And if I did that, we wouldn't have any YouTube videos. So take me as I am. Okay, so after that Roy, okay, red, orange. So I did decided to do the red into the corals into the pinks first because I didn't know where else on the rainbow to put them other than at the end. But I like this. I like this. So this entire row I think is going to be the R <laughs> of the Roy, of the rainbow of Roy G. Biv. Um, I think I might get orange in at the end though. I do have a binary orange and I have a lot of them. So I have probably five or six feet worth of them. So I'm doing it. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm drinking some water though. I'm thirsty. Here's another one of those um, blocks <laughs> that I ran over. These ones in the front here with no leaves, that isn't gonna do anything. I'm not gonna plant those. But like that one right there, you can see it's growing a little tiny baby because um, I accidentally broke her head off. Anyway, so yeah, the ones with leaves, I'm gonna go ahead and plant the ones without leaves. Nope. I had some people asking me why I didn't pre-cut the fabric before um, laying it down like this. And Bio 360 is not something that you pre-cut. You don't burn holes in it. It's a very thin corn product. All you do is take your finger like that. That's all you do. It just pop. It's that easy. Okay, the first row is done. We got to yellow. So we're actually, it was perfect. The yellow went all the way to the end. So now in this row, we're starting with green, which means I'm doing lime, like the binary lime, and then I'm doing all of the queen lime series. So the queen lime lime, the queen lime orange, and the queen lime red. See, it's not as solid at the very beginning because the sorry. bed's trying to figure itself out. Okay, so we have two and a half rows of zinnias done. We are leaving that empty and we're gonna skip the next row because I have a succession planting of zinnias. And so we're gonna go to the fifth row over and that's where I'm starting status. And status is a little bit more spaced out, nine to 12 inches. Some internet sites say 18, but I'm not going that far. We're just gonna do about 12 inches. Recording. Okay, now this row is Gomfrina. We're starting with Carmine. Carmine, Gomfrina, six inch spacing. Okay, so we got the Carmine and the orange Gomfrina in, and then uh, I have to quit for the day because I have a birthday party. Day two, 
hour one. Well, for the love of crying out beasts, the killdeer are in my fields. There's the mama or the papa and the baby's running down here. Gonna do the plop and squat. Gonna do the plop and squat. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's where I'm about to plant. <laughs> She's just gonna have to get used to sharing the space with me because this is where I am, lady. This is where I am. Okay, so now I'm gonna plant. Uh, so we did the orange. We ended up with finishing the orange, and now I have strawberry and bicolor rose that I'm gonna put in. row of Gamfrina complete. On to row two of Gamfrina. We're starting with, where are they? <laughs> a tray of lilac. It got a little sunburn the other day, but I think it's gonna be just fine. Looks wonderful. Okay, so it's evening. Well, it's later in the afternoon, late, late, late afternoon, early evening on day two, and I was able to get in all of the gamfrina. So I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of gamfrinas, all different colors. And then at the end of this row right here, I decided to put in Dusty Miller. I have two trays of Dusty Miller. This is the tray that I started from seed myself. They look like fantastic. I'm pretty sure that Dusty Miller is my favorite <laughs> little seedling, the way that it looks, it just looks, just so pretty with the white, I love it so much. So anyway, now I am actually skipping a whole bunch of beds because I have been dying to get the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus in. So the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus is something that needs a lot of more space and it also gets really, really tall. Gina grew it last year and they were like 10 feet tall. <laughs> They're really, really big. So they created this really nice, basically a wall of mahogany splendor hibiscus and i love that and i want to put it on the very first row because a couple of you guys have mentioned the traffic on my road i'm gonna tell you i'm never, I'm never gonna say that there is no traffic on my road but the traffic on my road has doubled this summer so far i guess this spring it's not summer yet because there is a major detour and we're on it so another state highway that crosses about a mile that way, that goes in a totally different direction to the Adirondacks, to the old forge area, to the Adirondack Mountains, that's closed. There's no other way to get there, except for going by my house. So because that is closed, the traffic has literally doubled in front of my house. It's still a state highway and we still get a decent amount of traffic, but it's never been this busy. It's been kind of crazy the last couple of weeks, especially on a holiday weekend. There have been people with their boats and their kayaks and they're all going camping. So it's been an especially busy weekend and I'm very much looking forward to that highway opening back up so the traffic in front of my house goes back down. Now the uh, the reason that the highway is closed is because they're replacing two steel deck bridges. So it's a, it's a big deal. It's a long project and they do not anticipate it being done before August. Sorry, my battery died. Okay, so because we have the additional traffic and we could have it through the summer, really, I would like to put up something of a barrier. So the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus is gonna go on the very first row that's closest to the road. Might help with some noise too. I think I'm gonna plant them about um, maybe like 24 inches apart, but like crisscrossed, zigzaggy, zigzag. Day three, hour one. <laughs> Yesterday I only got about three hours and I had a lot of other stuff to do. And it was Memorial Day and we had some stuff going on. So I was able to get in the Sweet Annie as well. So I have the Mahogany Red Hibiscus, the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus on the end. And then I have the Sweet Annie. And now I have my tray of Amaranth. And this grew so tall last year that it's definitely gonna work in this blockage row. Let's see. So these are, oh, I dropped one. <laughs> I dropped the block. These are a few of the tray or of the seedlings that I have ready to go in the ground. I have hot biscuits, 
Hopi red dye, red spike amaranth. This last year grew like four feet wide and 10 feet tall. And then I have emerald tassels amaranth. I also have coral fountains up there and a whole bunch of other ones that I will fill this area with. So this row right here, I'm gonna start with Celosia. I have Flamingo Feather, Pompous Plume. I think this is Super Crest. And I have several more trays up there too. I know I have Texas, the Texas Pompous Feather Celosia mix. So I ended up with like a, maybe a 10 or 12 foot space here. I know I have some amaranth up there that's hardening off. So I don't wanna bring it out. It hasn't been in full sun yet for a whole day. So I'm keeping it in my area where I'm hardening things off. And then that will fill in the gap there. Plus, I think I'm going to do about a four foot section of ornamental grass right there at the end. <laughs> so this is right here an example of the way things grow differently. Now these were started at the exact same time, in the exact same conditions, and this little guy, well here's the difference in conditions. This one was in the center of the soil block, probably where the water stays most moist in the soil blocks, and then this one's a step out. And then these ones are on the outer edges. So you can see this one's like, like 10 inches tall and super, super sturdy and thick. And then this little guy is like five inches tall. And then these little seedlings are just, just that. They're just seedlings. So I'm planting them all in the ground. And it's kind of like succession planting accidentally. It's done, it's done, it's planted, it's planted. I still have a lot more to go though. Anyway, <laughs> this is what it looks like now. I'll give you guys some close-ups. So there were a couple things that I planted that I did not have the camera on for, basically because I was planting in the rain and I don't wanna get my camera equipment all um, gross. And I do have a rain cover for it, but it was just one of those days where I just needed to get stuff done and I needed to get it done that day. You can sort of, sort of see, I didn't like do anything special, but yeah, there are, two rows of dahlias here and there's a walkway there's our two rows of dahlias here same thing on the end and same thing on that side right there so there are just basically four rows of dahlias and then i also have dahlias set up over in one of the bio 360 rows the zinnias so i planted the zinnias if you saw in rainbow order just something fun i'd like to try out um, so i started obviously with red roy g Biv all the way down i think I think we only got to <laughs> Roy over here. So I think green starts right here and uh, goes all the way down. And then I also have white at the end along with the Queen Lime series, which I'm very excited about. So they've tripled in size. I've actually had buds on them. I pinched a lot of them. I'm not gonna pinch all of them. I'm gonna let some kind of bloom and then act as the first cut to be its pinch. I do that on some things just because I, get, I want the earlier blooms. Uh, but right here, pinching it you can use tools but I took off the top you know and this you see there's a there's a little bit of a new growth right there I left half of it down there and I'll have even longer stems Bing! because of it now that space is empty right here and this entire row right here that's where a big rock was is empty because I have several more trays of zinnias to put in. So I'm gonna be filling that in. And you see that right there? That's two trays of basil that need to go in. I am just super happy with the zinnia right now. A lot of it was pinched already. It just, I mean, I can walk all the way down here, guys. Um, for me, they're just about being healthy plants. And I think that this is just um, such a good start. Such a good start. So here's a good example of one of the plants that I pinched probably a week ago, maybe not even, but you can see where it's starting to put out new growth everywhere. <laughs> it's just really, this one too. Yeah, it's just a good idea. 
So I do have some bug damage. I know it's a horrible year for bug damage. I spaced these six inches apart. You can see I have four going across here. One, two, three, four. So I do have some caterpillar damage. I've seen poop, the poop on the, the plants from the caterpillars. And I have sprayed, I think three times now with Captain Jack's dead bug. And the damage is pretty much contained. Look how nice those look. Look at those babies. They look so much healthier than last year's plants already. Now, I, I did add compost to every hole as I was planting. Okay, so these next three rows, I'm very excited about. This entire 70 foot row right here is status. Yeah, status. Now, they also are color coordinated. I don't remember off the top of my head which one's which, but they go in color order. And then this next row that you see here is uh, Gomfrina. And that Gomfrina goes all the way down and then picks up in the top of the third row. And there's another, oh, 25 feet of Gomfrina. And then it switches over to Scabiosa. So then there's Scabiosa. And then there's, I think, yes. And then the row finishes out with Dusty Miller, the Dusty Miller that I started from seed. Just a reminder, I'm in upstate New York zone 4B. My last frost wasn't until about just a couple of weeks ago. And um, like I said, we had 39 degrees this morning. So I have a short season at a hoop house, which I do not grow in a hoop house. You can have them earlier. And that's another point that I wanted to um, talk about with you guys is that zone envy is a thing, but you can't judge what you're doing up against anything else that somebody else is doing. Because you could, I mean, you can literally just fall into a depression and a why, why, why don't I have that yet? How come mine's not blooming? You know, it's really just focus on what you're doing and your successes and not everybody else's because it can really lead you down to a slippery soap. <laughs> slippery soap. <laughs> slippery slope and nobody wants that who wants to be depressed about what they're doing you guys want to feel good about what you're doing it just I see a lot of people and I think social media has a lot to do with it it's just like comparison and and that's just not a healthy way to go about farming so just pay attention to what you're doing and how you can improve what you're doing not because you want to be better than somebody else but because you want to be the best that you can I'm not gonna lie, I think my status is looking pretty good. Now, there were some that did not make it. They were really small. So I just put a seed in the hole and now I have babies. <laughs> but check this out. Status, I'm getting status, guys. It's amazing. Look at the size of that. It's, it's massive. That's why I spaced these about 12 inches apart because they can get quite large. Doesn't mean you have to, but that's just what I did. There's my basil. Look at, it's a little sad. <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a succession planting of basil that's gonna go in here. I was gonna do it yesterday, but it poured all day. Look at that one. Super excited about being status throwing out crazy amounts of buds. And here we have me, hello, and the Gomfrina. Uh, it's really looking good. Over here, we'll do two rows at a time. This is the Dusty Miller I started from seed, and uh, also well, everything, everything I started from seed, except for, I did buy a tray of Dusty Miller, and that's a few rows that away. Here's a closer look at the Dusty. It's not huge, uh, but that's okay. It really is such a nice looking plant though, and I'm really hoping that I'll actually get something. I'm further along than I was last year because last year I let the Dusty Miller die in the tray because I never got around to planting it and I forgot it was there and it ended up shriveling up and dying. Lots of Gamfrina babies, so many, and some didn't make it. So my mother-in-law helped me and I know she's watching this right now and she was pretty adamant on saving all of the plants and planting them all. And I kept telling her, I think that one's too little. I don't think it's gonna make it. Um, but you know, okay, go ahead and plant them. Like those two holes right there. We either skipped them or that was a really small plant and it just didn't make it. You can see all of these Gonfrina have little Gonfrina on them already. Now you can pinch these. This one is an orange Gonfrina. I had a lot of that. You can pinch these um, or you could let them grow. It's kind of up to you. The first cut can act as the pinch as well. Oh, oh wait, I missed the Scabiosa, so sorry. Yeah, so here are some Scabiosas. I only have a couple hundred of them. I know that sounds silly, 
um, but some of the plants are doing really well and some I also just put seeds in for because the plants shriveled up and died so uh, which I did last year and I actually was successful in that so yeah so here are the scabiosa plants beautiful a bunch of different colors and then we have more of the gonfrina these plants are just I'm really happy with them you know they just look good Here's a closer look at some of my dahlias. This is one that I pinched. You could see that it's growing and you could, we had such a downpour that all of the plants are basically covered in dirt because of the uh, splash up. But since I pinched right there, I've got two brand new stalks growing. So definitely does help. It is getting brighter out. This row is mostly dahlias. So I have the dahlias that are in the front here are the Jessica dahlias. Those are the dahlias that my sister bought me seeds for and they're, her name is Jessica. <laughs> So I call them the Jessica Dahlias. And then we have a whole bunch of different ones. Um, what is that? Black something? Oh, black satin. So there's a black, black satin, Chilson's Pride, um, purple and white ones that I saved from a million years ago. And then we have the ones that I started from seed that are from uh, Florette and then also some from um, Johnny's, I think, the Unwinds Dahlia. Or was that from Baker Creek? Anyway, it was a couple of different seed packets. I, I did both. And then we have cherry tomatoes, and then we have nasturtium forest down there at the bottom. Those are some flower buds on the berry crazy cherry, and I got so excited about it, and I posted it on Instagram, and Serena from You Can't Eat the Grass told me, if you're excited about that, that's a relatively small cluster of flowers, just wait, they'll look like yellow hydrangeas. I still have to get some support system over here for a lot of my tomatoes. I did start doing the Florida weave and that seemed to be uh, working pretty well. That's a very common method of staking tomatoes that a lot of gardeners use. Uh, and then my nasturtium over here, they're a little yellow looking because I just, they, they were just in their pots too long. They were left over from the seedling sale. Well, there's a whole bunch of different kinds. There's um, trailing mixed nasturtium and then I have Yeti and I believe the orchid is in there as well. So lots of different nasturtiums, both for eating and for bouquets. These next two rows, you guys just watched me plant in a video last week. These are 364 tomatoes. So I'm not gonna go over those again. But aren't they looking like much healthier? They've already turned a nice shade of green. Some of them are hanging down and <laughs> like falling over. I gotta get more uh, support on them, but they're gonna be great. I'm um, so many baby tomatoes already. Leftover plug trays making messes. Okay, so this row right here is kind of like a hodgepodge of things that I only had like a small tray of or something. So right here on the end, I've got about 20 snow on the mountain euphorbia plants. Wicked excited about that. So it was a funny story because I started those in um, basically a Chinese takeout like container and I just spread them out and then whatever germinated, I transplanted out. So as I was transplanting all of these out, the other seeds that hadn't germinated were starting to germinate. So in the house, I, I have another tray of about 15 still on the mountain euphorbias that I'm gonna bring out here and add to the end of one of these rows. And then after that, I just noticed there's um, buds on my stock to here. So there's an, about an eight foot row of stock, which was like a, a third succession planting. The other two are up in the um, deer fence area. Um, but yeah, so there's stock, which one is budding up, looks a little yellow also sat in the tray too long. That's okay, things usually adapt and they'll be fine. Oh, after that I have some echinacea that I've got down here. I just found it in the tray and threw it in the ground here. Um, and then I have like the limelight millet and the um, the wheats, the black tip wheats, the silver tip wheats, the grasses. And then after that, I have the hens and chick poppies, which was a packet that I picked up from Baker Creek. Now that looks really cool, but I don't use the flower there. I wait for the petals to fall off and it leaves this really cool shape of a pod, which is called hens and chicks, cause it looks like hens and chicks, the succulent. So after that I have, I don't know, let's go see. Okay, I see what it is. <laughs> I for completely forgot what I planted. Okay, so I've got some more of the um, echinacea. I think it's a mellow yellow echinacea. And then I have um, the African disc daisies, those white daisies with the blue center. People were really excited about that. And that goes for a while. And then I have the winged emobium, the winged emobium. And that was, um, that's an everlasting flower. And then on the end, I have the white marigolds. I think they're called the Kilimanjaro maybe. I forget the name of them right now, but they're a white marigold. And at the end of the, this tomato row right here, guys, I threw in the rest of my long hats. Peppers. Next row, we have Dusty Miller once again. 
Uh, it's it's a good 25 feet. <laughs> I hope it grows. The sun melting, melting. And then after the Dusty Miller, I have star flower. I don't know what I was thinking. Right after the star flower, I did straw flower. I wanted to have a tongue twister, you know, because that's a normal thing to do. Star flower, straw flower, star flower, straw flower, star flower, straw flower. Yes, three times fast. Anyway, the whole entire row is star, uh, star, and then straw, star, straw, star, straw. Yeah, star, straw. And directly below the camera is eucalyptus. Can you see me? Anyway, oh God. Really though, hello. <sighs> anyway, I ended up with two eucalyptus plants and um, they're there, they're actually quite happy. They didn't like the two inches of rain that we got yesterday, but they're doing okay. So after the Chula eucalyptus right here in this row, we have about uh, 12 or 14 feet of snapdragons. This is the succession planting of snapdragons that I frantically planted when some of my snapdragons started to die. <laughs> so this is the last succession of snapdragons, which my first succession is starting to bloom. Very exciting. That'll be in another video. And then we have, what? What do we have? Oh, that tray of uh, larkspur. That's, that's next. And then we have, perhaps most exciting, Silouja. This is my 45 foot row of Silosia. It is amazing. Everything looks so good. I am so far ahead of last year at this time. It's absolutely unbelievable. Last year at this time, all of my plants were probably this big, but they're just so healthy and so beautiful. And you see this? I keep having to pinch it because I don't want that. That's too soon for that. So I'll let the side shoots come out. Now, you have to pay attention to what kind that you have because some kind you can pinch and other kinds you can't. So some of these are like the brain, the comb celosia, and a lot of these are plumes. So there'll be a whole assortment of different colors, different textures, I'm very, very happy. And it brings me to the final row. Do you see that goodness? That is my amaranth. Wait, no, that's not. That's just grass. Okay, so at the very end of the amaranth row, I have grass. These are my beautiful, these I think are coral, coral fountain, coral fountain. I've got hoppy red dye. Oh my God, look at this row. Just, what the heck happened there? <laughs> oh. Anyway, they're just so good. You can't see, but they're about 18 inches tall and they're really good, really healthy. I don't see any bug damage on anything. I've pinched the majority of these and you can see just like with the other, like the dahlias and stuff, they start to branch out from below where you pinched. They're just, oh, look at that. Look at that. I think this is emerald tassels. I think, I can't tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, there's some damage. Look at this. What is that? Interesting. Something is eating this one. I'm gonna have to get down here with the Captain Jacks tonight and make sure we take care of that. But you know, that's the only damaged leaf out of all of these plants. So we'll have to get on top of that. Look at these. Oh, they're just so good. And this is my red spike amaranth section. I know they're planted fairly close together, but this is my method of trying to keep them on the smaller side. Plus pinching will help with that as well. Last year I only had one, one red spike amaranth. It grew four feet wide. So we're gonna see what happens when I plant them this close together. And then this is either emerald tassels or something else. I have so many different kinds, guys. It's kind of insane. Look at this. Look at that, it's branching out from so many different spots. And then here I have a little bit of a casualty story um, and that's okay. Some of them are doing really well, some are not. This is Sweet Annie and uh, some of them look like this where they're really healthy looking, but some were just too small and they were hitting the sides of the Bio 360 and they ended up burning up and dying um, shortly after they came out. So we'll see how these do. And then the end of this row is my Mahogany Red Hibiscus. It's doing well. It's gonna grow to be very large, very much in charge, and it will fill up this entire block. Uh, but right now, this is what it looks like, and it's about, I would say, 14 or 15 inches tall, all of them. They're actually quite uniform. 
and they make one of my favorite fillers in the fall. I have been dying to share this with you guys. I absolutely am in love with this new area. I know you guys are gonna have some questions. So basically, how do I water? Well, we, like I said, we get pretty decent rain on average, but if you look over there, weep, that black, right there. <laughs> this is why I was never a meteorologist. You have to point the opposite way, right there. <laughs> that is a water tank. We have a black cover that protects it from algae. We, it, it works. That's been sitting there for over a week there's no algae in it and it's been hot. Those black covers will work for algae. If you have a water tank and you have water and you have no cover on it, you're going to have some algae growth inside those tanks. We don't, it's really clean. We have a pump system. Um, I'm gonna do a video explaining how all of it works with Brad because Brad's kind of the genius, not kinda, Brad is the genius behind that system and you should see what he has set up for Wildflower Field. It's amazing. And we also have discovered a new water source on the property. And it's not that we discovered it. We've known it was there, but we didn't know if the water was usable. It's the old dug well on the property that we used when I was a kid. Now, the water's good, we've been using it, and I'll show you how we've been doing that. So did I amend the soil? I amended the soil as I was planting. I was adding compost into each hole. The area is just too large for me to bring in 17 dump trucks, loads of compost, and, and till it all in. So we amended as we planted, and that seems to be working really well for the plants. They all look super happy. Oh, there's basil. I didn't even show you the basil. In front of the tomatoes here, there's a row of basil. Sorry, I skipped over that one. Um, anyway, so I also want to tell you that I do fertilize weekly with the Neptune's Harvest Fertilizer, and I have been spraying weekly applications of Captain Jack's Dead Bug Spray. That can get fairly expensive, especially when you're doing a large, large quantity of area like this. Um, but you know, I find that if I skip a week and I don't do it, there are bugs, and especially this year, guys, I don't know what's going on, but seriously, <laughs> they just landed on my cheek. The bugs are insane. It's like I paid him to do that. When you hear me talk about bugs, land on my cheek. I promise I'll swat you a little bit low. Don't worry, you're gonna make it through. Can you see me? <laughs> this is the sight I've been waiting a long time for. I'm just gonna soak it in. And if you're wondering about weeding, this is not a landscape garden. This is a farm. Weeds happen, and I'm okay with that. Do I want weeds overrunning things? No, I am gonna do my best to stay on top of them, but I'm not gonna be a maniac about every little piece of grass that's coming up. As long as the plants are up above the flowers, I mean the weeds, <laughs> as long as the plants are up above the weeds, I am not gonna um, go crazy about it. I will have my kids come down here about probably once or twice a week for about half hour, 45 minutes, and just pull blades of grass. Anyway. I just am so excited to share this with you guys. I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and I'm glad there's a little bit of a gap between when I planted it and now and then I'll you know, be able to bring you guys updates as it goes on. I did purchase deer netting. I did. Most of the things I have in here are deer resistant plants but I'm also concerned about woodchucks. Mm, so I don't know. I did purchase enough deer netting to completely enclose this. The problem I'm running into is finding the tall T-posts right now, those big stakes for fencing. They're kind of sold out everywhere, and I think I can order them online, but the shipping is incredible because they're very heavy stakes. So I'm in the process of looking for those stakes. I do have 400 feet of seven foot tall deer netting to go around these, and um, some for the hydrangeas as well, but um, just haven't been able to locate those posts just yet. Coming up later this week, I'll uh, show you what's actually starting to bloom on the farm. I'm really excited. So thank you so much for sticking around and we'll see you soon. I'm pretty sure our neighbors hate us. Like it was, I think it was before eight o'clock and Brad's out here with a brush shot. Just going, ching, 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 hitting rocks. Here he is, right here. Are you done? You tired? <laughs> You're on strike? <laughs> Why? It's Sunday. Yeah, it's Sunday. Sunday fun day. Eventually. <gasps> Look at you. <laughs> Looking like a snack. Mm. Hashtag farm life!